Log Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim GK, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim GK. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having Tim Corley. He is going to talk about his book, Rich Habits, The Daily Success Habits of Wealthy Individuals. We're going to take a break for a moment for our sponsor, and we'll be back with the show. You're listening to the Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. Ninety percent of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Well, welcome back. Tom, good morning. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, thank you. I guess to begin with, listeners love to hear personal stories on how our authors come to be. So kind of tell us about yourself, where you're from, and how you came to be part of this industry. Sure. I'm uh, from New Jersey, and I'm a CPA, Certified Financial Planner. I specialize in financial planning and tax, and lately I've kind of taken on a new career, I guess, with the success of my book, Rich Habits. So I've been doing a lot of writing and speaking and You know, mostly what I talk about is how to help people to break free from the uh, cycle of poverty. Wow. How did you come up with the title, Rich Habits? Actually, I believe that that just popped into my head one (laughs) one night. It was, I was struggling. I had done this research, uh, which took five years. I studied the daily habits of 233 wealthy people and 128 poor people. And the idea for the book came later on and popped into my head one night because I was just searching for a name and Rich Habits to me was the perfect title because it represented everything summarized everything I was trying to convey in two words. Wow. You know, looking at your, you know, that title, Rich Habits, what are the main differences between what you see between the wealthy and the poor? I mean, of course, income and money is going to be the factor, but what are the major differences you see in between the two that one can, uh, well, necessarily don't bring you happiness, but what do you see that's kind of parallel that you see in both cases? Yeah, well, in my research, the byproduct of that was 201 activities that separate the wealthy from the poor. And some of them are, for example, 77% of the poor people in my study watched more than an hour of TV a day, whereas the wealthy people, 67% of the wealthy watched less than an hour of TV a day. 74% of the poor people, they spent more than an hour on the internet in recreational use, and 63% of the wealthy spent less than an hour. The other thing, Tim, was self-improvement. Only 2% of the poor people in my study engaged in a rich habit that I called the reading self-improvement rich habit. Only 2% of the poor read 30 minutes or more each day, either for self-improvement, education, career-related. But in the wealthy, 88% of them did this, 30 minutes or more a day. These are just a few of them, but I think the self-improvement rich habit really was the big difference in percentage-wise. Wow. Any advice that you would give to a person with lesser means to how can they self-improve themselves? Yeah, there's rich habit number one. I call it the reinvention habit. In order to begin this whole process Mm -hmm. of changing your life, you have to change your habits. Your 40% of all of our daily activities are habits. So if you have more good daily success habits than you have poverty habits, uh, you're 40% of the time you're on the right track. So what you need to do is you've got to break down 
what your bad habits are. You got to, and I show in the book how you take out a piece of paper, two columns. The first column are your old bad habits, and you just list as many of them as you can think of. For example, let's say you know you smoke cigarettes. That would be a bad habit. Then I show you how to invert those bad habits to rich habits. So instead of I smoke cigarettes, the new rich habit is I did not smoke a cigarette today. Uh, now you might think, well, not smoking a cigarette, how could that be a rich habit? But the idea is you want to get the seesaw. I call it the seesaw of success. Mm -hmm. You want to get the seesaw in your life on one side are poverty habits, on the other side are rich habits. You want to get that tipping over to the rich habits side. And once you get more than 50% of your habits uh, that encompass rich habits, you're going to start to see your seesaw tip towards success. And over time, you're going to experience more success. Wow. That's something else. Can I tell us, in your book itself, can I name us some of the things that, that we can use to improve ourselves? But just kind of talk about your book in general. Yeah, the rich habits really was, as I said, came after I completed my research and created the Rich Habits Training Program. I was doing, I was going to create the program really just for my clients, but I started teaching it outside of my client base, and I had so much success with people that they told me you should write a book about this stuff. So I decided to try and summarize all of these 200 activities into simple habits, simple daily success habits that you could follow. And if you follow them, it will change your life. So I have 10 rich habits that I summarize in the book, and I get into the detail through the incorporating the book as the training program. So the, the readers not only get a good story, but they are introduced to the training program. And they start out with rich habit number one, and I work them through all the way to rich habit number 10. And by the time they're done, they have a, a new template for life. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind, can you meet, I guess, name three rich habits uh, without giving you know, a whole story away, but can you name three that's really come to mind to you that they really need to be aware of? Yeah, rich habit, the self-improvement rich habit is an important habit. Wealthy people engage in self-improvement every single day. It might be self-help books, reading, writing, speaking, doing. Those are the four strategies they use. But they engage in self-improvement every day, and that gets them higher up the ladder of success uh, goals. Wealthy people set goals. And what I found out, Tim, in my research is we were all taught the wrong definition of a goal. To wealthy people, a goal is only a goal if it has two things. One, uh, it has to have some physical activity. There has to be some physical activity associated with the goal. And it can't be a wish. A wish is something that you have no control over. So you want to have some physical activity, something that you do every day so that there's a, and it can't be a wish. There has to be 100% achievability. So those two things, 100% achievability, not a wish and action has to be some physical activity. And one of the other ones is the rich habit. The, I call it the 80, 20 rule. It's the living below your means, rich habit. Wealthy people teach their children, wealthy parents teach their children right out of the gate to set aside their, either their gifts 20 to 50% of their gifts, anything they earn as children, set aside into a bank account to save, save, save. They teach their kids this rich habit early on. I know I've been teaching it to my kids, and they're doing a great job saving money. They teach this rich habit to their kids, and what happens, Tim, is they learn to live off of 80%. Eventually, when they get into the work world, they put aside 20%. They learn to live off of the 80%. And then they just start accumulating wealth slowly over time. And when they get that raise or that bonus or that new job that pays them a lot more, they even put 20% away of the bonus and the uh, increase in salary. So by the time you know, 20, 25 years into their career, they're financially independent. Wow. You know, saving for the average person is very difficult when you're trying to make ends meet. You're dealing with, the, let's say, maybe the middle class or the working class that some live from paycheck to paycheck, what things they can do to kind of priorities, put in priority or perspective their finances in place so they can have the luxury of, of saving and accumulating wealth? Well, one of the things that I think a lot of people make a mistake on in my blog, in my, on my website, richhabits.net, I, I have a bunch of articles that your uh, listeners can get access to. One of the things that I talk about is how to raise your kids to be happy and successful in life. It's, a, it's one of the articles. In there, I lay out some of the spending limits that you should teach your kids about. For example, your housing costs should never be more than 25% of your net income. If it's more than 25% of your net income, 
then you're living beyond your means. And you need to never lease a car. Leasing a car is a poverty habit. Wealthy people do not lease cars. They buy cars. Oftentimes, they're buying these new used cars. They're not buying brand new cars. They're buying used cars, but that are in, in good coming off a lease. <laughs> and so they hold on to these cars until the wheels fall off. And you really don't want to be spending more than 10% of your net income on your auto, on any auto costs, your insurance, your auto payment, your monthly payment, et cetera, and create a budget. You want to have a budget that at least for the first 60 days of starting out your career, get on a budget so that you can understand where you're spending your money. You'll find out you're wasting a lot of money. And there's, um, there's good wastes of money. There's going to bars and having fun with your friends and networking and building relationships. And then there's silly wastes of money, which is, you know, spending two or three dollars for a cup of coffee when your employer has coffee on site. You know, so you, there's these foolish ways of frivolous spending. And then there's the legitimate ways of spending money. And I go through that also on my website. Okay. And a couple more things, I think, in your book that you want to point out to people or advice you want to give? Yeah, they, sure. You know, if you're poor and you want to get on the right track, what you've got to do, it, very often, it only takes two or three habits, either adding two or three rich habits or getting rid of two or three poverty habits. Oftentimes, Tim, that's all it takes mm -hmm. to get that seesaw, that success seesaw tipping in the right direction. And if you don't assess yourself, self-assess, so that you understand where you are in life in terms of your habits, then you're going to get caught up in what I call the generational cycle of poverty. This is the reason why the poor get poorer. They have bad habits. They teach these poverty habits to the children. The children grow up to be poor. So you want to really self-assess, understand what some of the bad habits are that are holding you back. And everyone, rich or poor, has poverty habits. The difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich have fewer poverty habits than the poor. Well, I know you run across the rich, poor people, <laughs> those who make ridiculous amount of money but spend it like is mm -hmm. they're going to die tomorrow. In that particular case, how can you reel someone in that particular life? You know, hey, I'm going to every morning I'm going to Starbucks and pick up the Wall Street Journal. I am, you know, I work so hard. I need to reward myself. How can you get that out of their system? In one sense that, hey, you make all this money, you really need to put some away. How can you bring all of that in for that yeah, you know, wealthy, rich, you know, poor person? The, the reason I wrote Rich Habits is I wanted to espouse a couple of ideas of mm -hmm. how to get wealthy. There's really three ways that you can accumulate wealth. One is to live below your means. The second way is to expand your means. And the third way is to do both. Rich Habits, it does teaches you how to do both. Mm -hmm. If you're focus on a lot of people who are earning a lot of money. They're profit and loss rich, not balance sheet rich. Those individuals actually have one of the ways that they're accumulating wealth is through expanding their means. But because they're not also adopting the living below your means rich habit, they're going to go through their income. Uh, so you can't explain to someone who has been taught by their parents the poverty habit of living beyond your means, you can't get them to the point where they're going to adopt the living below your means rich habit until they're actually at the point when something happens like a job loss. Uh, I have, I, for example, one person in the, been involved with for the last three years trying to teach them the rich habits as a client. They made you know, anywhere from 500 to a million dollars a year for about six or seven years, have nothing to show for it. And when they lost their job, that's when they came to me for advice. And now they're living the rich habits there, and hopefully they'll be able to expand their means again, and they won't make the same mistake twice. The reason I wrote Rich Habits is so that you can learn from what wealthy people do and adopt these rich habits so that you don't make the mistake that a lot of poor people make on every day. Wow. And you talk also within the anatomy of a, of a goal. How important is to set a goal? Well, I think if goal setting is uh, critical, it's it's one of the most important things you can do. The problem that we've had, Tim, is we were taught the wrong definition of a goal. And, and everyone who, I would say everyone, but most of the people who set out and adopt the goal setting teachings and they try and set goals, they set you know an annual goal, they set a monthly goal. The problem with that is they were taught that a wish is a goal 
and it's not. Uh, wishes, you have no control over the outcome of wishes. A goal is only a goal when you have 100% achievability and there's some physical activity associated with it. An example is I did a learning session on goal setting a number of years ago, and one of the individuals in the group was a very successful property and casualty insurance agent. Mm -hmm. For four years, he was trying to get his life insurance commissions up to $100,000. He never even hit 40000 So he came to my learning session off of an ad, and he was hoping there would be something different because he had gone to several of these different you know, ads to, for seminars. And what I explained to him was you were making a wish. You weren't setting a goal. So we, I sat down with him later in the week, and I showed him how the actual goal is making an additional 10 or more telemarketing phone calls a day. So he went back to the office, and he started uh, had some people starting to make additional telemarketing phone calls, and he blew past his 100000 in commissions in wow. the pipeline in six months and ha actually had to shut down the process because it was so successful, and he had to get the rest of uh, the business through the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And then he started it up again. But he called me, and he said, my God, you've got to write a book on this stuff. So he was one of the reasons why I decided to write a book. This The goal-setting process, the rich habits goal-setting process is so powerful. That alone, and that's the thing that makes rich habits so unique, is you don't need to adopt all the rich habits. You might take one rich habit, and it could turn your life around like the goal-setting one. It has worked for me, and I've made a lot of money in the last couple of years, particularly in the last couple of years, because I've only been following the rich habits myself since 2009. And so this has really been an eye-opener for me, too, and helped me get my kids through college. So a lot of these habits, these rich habits, are life-changing. They change your life, and not overnight, but in time. Uh, how do you know when you're on the right track of financial success? What you need to do is, in order to, to even start the process, to get on the right track, you have to, that's why rich habits, number one, is the reinvention habit. You have to start mm -hmm. to reinvent yourself. You have to start to get rid of some of your poverty habits and adopt some of your, some of the rich habits. What will happen is, in the first 30 days, you're going to experience a, a shift in your thinking. It's going to go from negative, pessimistic, to positive, optimistic. And you're going to start to feel better about yourself. And because you're doing certain things like the daily reading, you might even be doing some writing. You might even decide, hey, I'm going to you know, join Toastmasters and start to learn how to speak. A lot of wealthy people speak. And you start doing these things. And you start feeling better about yourself. You start improving. And you may not notice it, but the people at work notice it. The people around you notice it, particularly your supervisors notice it. And in a little while, it's incremental, but it's like snowflake, I call it snowflakes on a mountainside. Each one of those rich habits that you follow every day is like a snowflake. It builds up and it builds up like snow on the mountainside. And eventually you have what I call an avalanche of success event. And it might be a bonus, a raise. It might be a new job. It might be any number of things because you're doing certain things that are creating, ultimately creating the success event. So you have to start the process. You have to keep with it. And you're going to find out within 30 days, your whole thinking changes. Okay. And what advice do you have for the unemployed in order to get back on track? Yeah. The, one of the 80% of all jobs come from somebody you know. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're unemployed, the chances are the job you're going to get from anywhere is going to come from the people you know. So why don't you expand the network of people that you know? Join nonprofit groups. A lot of these nonprofit groups, these charitable groups, uh, the people that head these groups are on the boards and on the committees. I know because I'm on about three of them. Uh, they're wealthy, successful people. And they, in time, as you get to know these people because you're working with them, uh, they'll open up their Rolodex to you. If they find out that you're in need of a job, uh, they'll make phone calls for you because they're connected to you. You're in a circle. You have to get inside the inner circle where these influencers are. And then one of the best ways to do that is through volunteering, through networking, civic groups, business groups. Join a couple of groups. I mean, you're unemployed. This will give you something to do. Uh, you're building relationships with all these new people. And it may take some time. It's not going to happen overnight. But it could be as little as six months that you meet a few people who will help you get on a new job or refer you to someone who is an influencer, and then the next thing you know, you've got yourself a job and you're on the right track. What about the opposite? And if you are wealthy and you have some money, 
you're doing the things that you need to do to keep, just like the insurance agent, maybe I'm there, but I want to do better. What advice do you normally have to give to that person so they make it to that next level? Yeah, I think it goes back to rich habit. Number one, you want to self-assess. You want to find okay. out what rich habits you have on your seesaw, your success seesaw, and maybe add one or two. That's probably all you need to do. Okay. I know a few of the wealthy people that I've talked with, and not wealthy, but high upper middle class. One of them called me one day to tell me that the hello call, the happy birthday call were working. He was making, I told him, you know, we talk about in the book, the hello calls, a reconnaissance mission. You gather information on people uh, that you want to develop relationships with. And the happy birthday call is keeps your relationships on life support. Uh, so you want to develop more relationships. I would say most of the wealthy people, relationships are the currency of the wealthy. So chances are, if you're in that middle class area where you're just not there, quite there yet, and you want to become wealthy, chances are it's the you're not building enough strong relationships. So that would be one. The other one would be self-improvement. Do a little bit more self-improvement. Maybe step outside your comfort zone and do speaking engagements. Maybe teach school at night. That hones your technical skills. Do certain things that will help you in your career from a technical standpoint, from a relationship standpoint. It might be only one or two things you need to do that tips the seesaw in the right direction. Okay. And also, the last couple of questions, uh, where can we purchase your book? Is it available on Amazon? Yeah, it's available everywhere books are sold. The, okay. If you go to richhabits.net, you can download. It's the only place you can download the ebook, and you can get it right away. But you can go also to get the hard copy on richhabits.net. You can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It's in bookstores. So anywhere books are sold. Okay. And to reach out to you, you can go to your website? Yeah, richhabits.net has a lot of great stuff on there. We've got all sorts of articles. I have a tip of the morning to you. It, it's a daily tip that shares some of the insight uh, from my research. And then I have uh, a tip of the week, which is a video tip. You can check that out. You, we have also, you can check out some of my media interviews that talk about some of the rich habits and gain a little bit more understanding of what I'm all about and and maybe some insight into more of the strategies that you can use. And the last thing, what do you like to uh, leave the audience with regarding your book? Yeah, I would say you want to do a couple of things. One is engage in 30 minutes or more of what I call self-help reading, self-improvement reading. Do it, get it out of the way early in the morning. If you're commuting, listen to audiobooks, turn the radio off just for your commutes to work so you can learn a little bit. And then the other thing is health. You should be exercising 20 to 30 minutes a day aerobically. Wealthy people are healthy people for a reason. When you're healthy, there are fewer sick days, more productivity, more energy, and that translates into more money. Wow. That's really awesome. Well, Tom, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I mean, it, you've been a wealth of knowledge. And again, if for your seminars you mentioned earlier, they can go to your website and see if there's one locally. Yeah, if they can email me. They go on my website. They just uh, click on my media kit. You can get all my contact information and or just email me at tom at richhabits.net and you know, we can set something up. There we have it, Tom. I really appreciate it with Rich Habits. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for having me on. I appreciate okay. it. Take care. This has been another episode of the Core Business Show. Thank you all for listening. You can download this episode on Block Talk Radio or on your local radio station. Everybody have a great day. Take care. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.